Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. Uh, we're going to be starting today's top news segment with a little bit of personal news. I had some, uh, some, some conversation with REM Beauty Customer Service, and I have officially canceled my order over there. At least I've tried to cancel it. We're going to be talking about why I'm no longer doing my REM Beauty review. Uh, that's the line that just dropped last week by Ariana Grande. After that, we are going to be discussing some uh, larger indie brands that have grown into bigger brands being sold to even bigger corporations. So which indie brands are kind of biting the dust? <laughs> We've seen it happen with so many before this. Which ones are the next ones to uh, go large? We're going to be talking about that. And then finally, uh, are you ready for spring of 2022? <laughs> There's a major cosmetic brand that's about to launch their spring 2022 collection. It's a thing. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. So let's go ahead and start with REM Beauty. So last week I told you that I bought over $200 worth of REM Beauty and I was really looking forward to giving you my thoughts on the line. Uh, that is not going to happen. Because I had ordered this one lip gloss in this one shade, my order was delayed to the shipping the beginning of December. And all of the people who got PR already put out their videos. Uh, if I wait <laughs> until the middle of December to give you my full honest opinion of REM Beauty, nobody's gonna care and honestly after talking to you all in the comments talking to people on Twitter you know it just seems like there just isn't a high interest in the people that watch my videos for that particular line so I contact a customer service first and I tried to just say hey can you just take the lip gloss out of my order and ship the rest they said no I asked them if they could replace the lip gloss with a different shade or a different product they said no so I, I tried to get it to be shipped earlier and and just decided that I was just, they're not gonna ship it earlier, so I just decided to cancel my order. And when I asked them if they would cancel my order, they said, well, maybe we can cancel your order, uh, which was weird. I will I will admit, I thought that was a little weird. They said that because of the way production is, they may not be able to cancel my order, even though it's not shipping for another couple of weeks that I may still get a shipping confirmation. And if they do send me the products to just return it to sender and, you know, what a freaking waste. What a waste of money and time for both parties, you know, and for the mail system. I mean, like we need extra mail <laughs> in the mail system right now with the holiday season. I don't know. I'm just very disenchanted with the whole thing. And honestly, I'm disappointed, but not surprised at the way that customer service is being handled over at the company. They are a form of brands company, uh, which is owned by Morphe. I've had similar interactions with people uh, with Morphe. So I'm not surprised that REM is going the same route. But that being said, I mean, I'm, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes and how difficult it is to change an order. It just seems like the customer should be the priority. And I've had that experience with so many brands, smaller brands, bigger brands, and it just doesn't seem to be the priority with this company. So I'm canceling my order, won't be doing the video. And I honestly think that very few people in the audience here are gonna cry about it. Another one bites the dust, and another one down, and another one down, and another one bites the dust. <laughs> That's probably every indie brand's dream, or at least most of their dreams, you know, to grow to the point where they're so large that they can be sold to a large corporation. So congratulations to them, but at the same time, I feel like sometimes when these smaller companies are sold to larger companies, the quality of the products goes down significantly, and it makes me a little bit sad. So let's talk about who are the latest victims <laughs> of uh, capitalist society. So we have three brands we're going to be talking about. L'Occitane has a acquired a majority stake in Sol de Janeiro. I know Sol de Janeiro is a favorite among a lot of people that watch my channel, so I don't know how you feel about it. I'm sad about it. L'Occitane has acquired 83% indirect interest in Sol de Janeiro based on a valuation of $450 million. The transaction is expected to close by the end of the year. Their CEO is going to remain in place. One of the big bummers about this is that L'Occitane recently revealed that they're turning into a multi-level 
global marketing company with consultants who have downlines. And a lot of times in those kinds of setups, the corporation, the company really makes a lot of money, but the people who are trying to sell that end up on the bottom of those downlines, a lot of times they lose out on money when they're just trying to earn money on the side. So I'm not a fan of multi-level marketing companies and to see such a great company like Sol de Janeiro being sold to L'Occitane, it just kind of breaks this, breaks my heart a little bit. Plus my own personal beef with L'Occitane. L'Occitane. That's beside the point, but it, it does make me a little sad that Sol de Janeiro chose to go with them and not another company. Like, I get that L'Occitane has a big international reach, and maybe that's what they're going for, but just made me a little bit sad. This is an interesting one, and you financial buffs are gonna have to explain this to me. <laughs> I don't quite understand exactly what's happening, but this is the basics. Waldencast Acquisition Corp is acquiring Obagi and Milk Makeup. They have, quote, entered into definitive simultaneous business combination agreements. There's an approximately $1.2 billion three-way transaction that's the first step as Waldencast tries to, quote, create a global best-in-class multi-brand beauty and wellness platform and a, quote, home for the next generation of high-growth, purpose-driven brands. I'm going to screenshot and just put the financial details on the screen, and maybe somebody that knows more about this can explain to me, like, what this actually means. What I can tell you that I do understand is that Obagi and Milk Makeup are going to go under the Waldencast portfolio, which is on NASDAQ under the symbol WALD. So yeah, so that I get that it's going to be publicly traded, but I don't get the whole like three-way transaction thing. So I don't know, maybe you can explain it to me. And finally, this one's a little more clear cut. P&G is taking over Pharmacy Beauty. Oh my gosh, did my heart break with this one. Procter & Gamble is investing in its skincare po portfolio. The terms of the deal have not been revealed and it's still subject to regulatory approval. The president of Skin and Personal Care for P&G Beauty told WWD, quote, we ha we've had our eyes on the brand for quite a while. I mean, it's like a shark. Like, I feel like they're a shark and they just ate pharmacy. <laughs> just like breaks my heart because their, their products, P&G's products are typically aimed at people that have the, like their brands they've been buying from forever, like Olay and Old Spice, you know, Head and Shoulders. Those are the P&G brands and now pharmacy. It's like, please don't turn pharmacy into Old Spice. Like, just like, I'm so scared for them. Hopefully they can keep their branding, keep their whole main heart behind pharmacy. I just... Oh, pharmacy is aimed to close out the year with sales approaching $80 million. So yeah, I really, I really hope pharmacy can, can keep being pharmacy. We'll have to wait and see. This next story is not going to be a shocker to most of you. I know a lot of you prefer shopping at Ulta over Sephora if you live in a country that has both options. The data is from the benchmarking company's Beauty by Numbers series number seven, and this is as of August 2021. Ulta Beauty has surpassed Sephora as the U.S. female consumer's favorite beauty retailer. And here are the stats based on 3,459 U.S. women. They didn't say any other demographic other than the numbers. I wish there was more information about the people they surveyed, where they lived, uh, just the financial breakdown, all of that stuff. Like, I wish there was more info, but there isn't. This is what they found out. 59% of the people surveyed had shopped at Ulta or Ulta.com in the past six months compared to 47% having shopped at Sephora or Sephora.com. Biggest factors were brand names that they know and trust, a broad selection of products, and the best value for the price. 75% of them said they purchased due to product reviews and consumer claims. The top products bought at Ulta were eye makeup and face makeup, followed by hair care and basic skincare. The most likely purchase from Ulta, though, was mascara which I thought was interesting, followed by anti-aging skincare and then foundation. This fact was interesting too, and see if this aligns with your shopping habits. Most Ulta shoppers bought from 
all price ranges found at Ulta rather than picking specifically lower cost products or higher cost products. So when you shop at Ulta, do you stick mostly to like the drugstore section or do you go over to the prestige section or are you more of a luxury shopper or do you mix things up? This says that most of the people they surveyed mix things up and buy things at all price points. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you feel like this is representative of you? Let me know in the comments. For the final story, I don't have a gadget for you this week. I'm hoping I'll to have one for you next week, but I do have something that I find a little bit weird. We sometimes see this in fashion, but we don't typically see people releasing spring collections in December for makeup pretty weird. Too Faced is sneaking their spring 2022 collection called Too Femme. They have an eyeshadow palette, six lipsticks, and a blush palette, and a themed version of the Better Than Sex mascara, both the regular and the waterproof version. According to Hype Bay, the eyeshadow palette is scented with old school sugared violet. I have no idea what that smells like. I know what violet smells like. I know what sugar smells like. I don't know what sugared violet smells like. I'll have to find out. And then the lipsticks are strawberry scented. Uh, they're sneaking it now because it is launching next month. Butterflies in December. Okay, let's do it. So my question is, how early do you think is too early? We're getting the holiday collections dropping in like August, September. Is December too early for spring? I'd love to know your thoughts. Let's go ahead and move on to the product report of things that launched this week. We have a lot of indie brand releases and we also have a lot of drugstore brand releases. Let's get started with the indie brand. Starting with Laura Lee Los Angeles Blush Aesthetic Palette. It is $28. You can get 20% off of the rest, the whole Laura Lee Los Angeles website, except for the blush palette using code LLLA20 over on the website now. I will tell you that Laura was kind enough to send it in PR. So we're going to be talking about it in PR or purchased. It's what inspired my makeup look today, but we're going to talk about it. So that is available now. Also available now from Kathleen Lights, Lights Lacquers Sugar Shop, four candied creams and icing worth jelly worthy. I think icing worthy, I think is what that meant. And a snowy opalescent dream is how they describe them. $69 for the collector's set of six polishes plus a sheet of nail stickers. But if you don't want the cute box, you can get the same products for $58. But if you don't, if you want the polishes without the nail stickers, that's $52. Or you can get individual polishes for $9.50 or just the nail stickers for $7. And I will tell you, I freaking love that they let you customize exactly what you want. Like you want just the big thing, you can have the big thing. We'll cut one thing out, we'll cut another thing out, we'll cut another thing out until we get down to the single polishes. And I just love that because I feel like it's shows care for the consumer and it just makes me really happy to see. Another indie influencer brand, Samantha Ravendahl's Auric Beauty. Two new smoke reflex have arrived in Disrupt and Entice. They are limited edition in special white and gold packaging. You can get the bundle for $78 or individually for $30, $39 each. If you are not familiar with those, they are, actually let me get mine. These are purchased, not PR, but this is how they work. You get a cream shadow in the bottom and then in the top you get a powder topper that looks kind of like that. As far as other indie brands go, Nomad Cosmetics Home for the Holidays palette is $32 and I absolutely love how different this is than the other holiday launches that I've seen. A lot of the holiday launches I've seen traditionally they're very natural looking, very neutral. I love that they went with bright colors. I think that's different and fun and definitely has a target audience. In case you notice a small lighting change. My ring light finally died, so I'm actually using my husband's ring light right now, so that's why things changed a little bit. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this one. I love to see good things happening to indie brands, and Alamar Cosmetics really makes great products, so this is fabulous. They are coming out with a limited edition collection in collaboration with Disney's Encanto, which is a brand new Disney movie that's about to come out. If you have not heard of it, this is the description. The Madrigals are an extraordinary family who live hidden in the mountains of Colombia in a charmed place called Encanto. The magic of Encanto has blessed every child in the family with a unique gift 
every child except Mirabel. However, soon she may be the Madrigal's last hope when she discovers that the magic surrounding the Encanto is now in danger. And I did see a preview for it. It looks so good. I cannot wait to see it. And this collection is so beautiful. It's based on the colors seen in the movie. There's 13 products altogether, a 10 pan eyeshadow palette, a highlighter, two blushes, two lip glosses, two lip liners, two liquid liners, a complexion brush duo, an eye brush trio, and a foldable mirror. Oh my gosh, this collection is just beautiful. You can tell they really put a lot of thought into it. It's gorgeous, and what a great opportunity for Alamar. So freaking cool. All right, this next collection, I, I used to, you know, I used to die over Too Faced packaging. I used to be like, you know what? Too Faced, they're nailing it. They're, they've got this really cute packaging. It's absolutely adorable. The quality of the products is really good. And then they got bought and then the quality of the products went down, but the packaging stayed really cute. I am going to take the title from Too Faced of cutest packaging, and I'm officially giving it to ColourPop because I feel like consistently they are coming out with thoughtful, cute packaging, cute collaborations, just absolutely adorable. This one, I just, how giftable is this? The Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Collection. Full collection PR set is $125. There's a 15 shade pressed powder palette, a peppermint candy cane flavored lippy scrub that doubles as a holiday decoration, a red creme luxe lipstick and matching lippy pencil, a peppermint flavored soft holly berry toned lip mask, a nude creme lipstick, Luxe lipstick and matching lippy pencil, a Luxe gloss trio in three new shades, and you also get a Mega Mood Melt Snowflake shaped bath bomb and a Jingle 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 Shimmering Body Powder. And of course, you also get <laughs> fuzzy reindeer hair clips. Oh my gosh. Samantha March did a full review of the collection if you're curious, but it is just so freaking cute. And I feel like this is just really giftable. Even if you're not going to do like the whole collection, they have so many bundles over there. And of course they are also have the individual products. Those are priced from $9 to $24. It's just, it's so freaking cute. And I feel like they're just nailing every collection. And I feel like they've done a really good job of what Anastasia Beverly Hills tried to do. Do you remember when they tried to say Anastasia Beverly Hills that they were launch, 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 because if you didn't want this launch, you might want this launch. But there really wasn't a ton of difference in the launches except for the color story. And I feel like ColourPop, with the way that they're doing it, there definitely is a market for the reindeer collection. But then they also came out with like that roaring 20s collection last week. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different markets and they're really hitting it. They're really able to do that. So congratulations to ColourPop on just continuing to crush it. Moving over to Sephora, just one thing of interest over there, for me at least, uh, the Violet Vost I Rust You palette, $45. I do think this is kind of cool for the right person, but it's so red. <laughs> I feel mean, like with eyeshadow, red, just some, I can't pull it off. Let's just say that. I'm not gonna talk about other people. I'm just talking about myself. I cannot pull off red. Red looks weird on me. <laughs> Maybe I just don't know how to use it properly, but I feel like it makes me look like a demon. Like I belong in a horror movie, you know? Like it's just... It's not for me, but for the right person, I think this is gonna be great. There is one other thing, but it's also available at Ulta, that Tarte Full Bloom palette we talked about last week. Uh, if you're interested, it is available at both retailers. They seem to have plenty of stock available if you want that. And then let's just keep going over at Ulta. CoverGirl came out with a new skincare line, and we don't usually talk about skincare here on What's Up In Makeup, but I wanted to make a special exception for this because I wanted to kind of do a little mini ingredient analysis on it for you in case you were interested in buying it. It's the CoverGirl Clean Fresh skincare line. Just a heads up, it all looks pretty basic. There really aren't a lot of bells and whistles to it, but there are some effective ingredients in there that are science-based. So if you're looking for a basic skincare line that'll do what it says it's gonna do, this may be the one for you. So we have the Mattifying Oil-Free Moisturizer, $19.99. From the ingredients, it just looks like a hydrating moisturizer. It makes sense for people with oily skin because a lot of times people with oily skin have an imbalance in hydration and the skin gets a little confused and produces more oil because it feels like it needs something and it can't produce more water. So that sometimes will help people with oily skin to balance their skin out. So that makes sense for it to be a mattifying oil-free moisturizer. And I was confused because the next product is the Weightless Water Cream 
cream moisturizer. It's the same price. It's marketed as a moisturizer and makeup primer in one, which makes sense. It's very similar to the other product, the mattifying one, but they add dimethicone in there, which is a really nice ingredient in makeup primers. So this is definitely gonna be more of a daytime product where the other one I think you could use for day or night. The one that is good for moisture balance is the Dry Skin Corrector Cream. Again, same price, $19.99. It is similar to the others as far as hydration, but then they add the shea butter to help for dry skin for that moisture balance. Then there's two other products, the Hydrating Clean Cream Cleanser, that's $13.99. They say it melts away the day's makeup, dirt, and oil, but based on the ingredients, honestly, it doesn't look like it's going to do that. I mean, maybe it will. Maybe there's something I don't know. Uh, it does look like it's gonna be nice and foamy though, so this would be probably a really good second cleanse after an oil-based makeup remover. And then finally, the Skin Priming Glow Mist, also $13.99. It really looks like it's mostly for hydration. One thing that's gonna be great to pair with this is an SPF because there are a variety of antioxidants in this, and antioxidants do really well to help boost the effectiveness of sunscreens. So this would be really good to spray on your face, apply your sunscreen, and then put your makeup on over top. But you definitely wanna put something occlusive, something with uh, some kind of oil or butter or something, something, uh, even silicones, you know, a foundation or silicone-based primer over top of it because it doesn't really have anything in itself. And what'll happen is, is because it has these water collecting ingredients in it, if there's nothing there to lock it in, then it's going to start trying to pull water from the lower layers of your skin and you don't want that. So if you do get this mist, make sure you top it with something, even if it's just a silicone-based primer or a foundation. If you use your SPF over top, if you use a moisturizer over top, you should be fine. All right, enough about that. Two more drugstore launches, but these were definitely a little weirder. There's nothing really cohesive about them. It's kind of odd. Maybelline dropped eight products at Ulta, starting with the Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Whipped Matte Makeup. $14.99, it says get the look of primer, concealer, mattifying powder, and BB cream all in one easy step. But what's weird about this is there's six shades and it looks like there's like three light and then three medium and sort of deep. <laughs> It's like a really weird shade range there. But it does sound very intriguing as far as what they're claiming that it does. I just wish they had more of a gradient as far as the range of shades. This is interesting too, the Tattoo Studio Brow Lift Stick. It's basically a tinted brow wax on one end and a brush on the other end to give you like feathered brows, because that's a big thing right now. It's $12.99, it does come in four shades, but I really appreciate they came out with a clear because sometimes with these, the tint can get a little messy and a little hard to control, especially if you have some smaller, thinner brows. So I'm really glad they came out with a clear. Then they have the Superstay Active Wear Liquid Concealer, 16 shades, $11.99. It's basically just a full coverage concealer. Uh, they do say it has up to 30 hours of wear. And I'm wondering what's the difference between 30 hours of wear and 24 hours of wear and 18 hours of wear? Like 30 hours is a lot. <laughs> Like, is there really is it is there really a difference between the 24 hours and the 30? That's really what I want to know. The shade range looks better than the foundation-y looking product, but it still is a little little weak on the gradient. We have two lipstick products, the Color Sensational Ultimate Neo Neutral Slim Lipstick 899 does come in 10 shades, mostly browns and reds. They say it is a lightweight blurring formula with high impact pigments and an extreme matte lipstick finish. Doesn't sound like anything new at all. And then a limited edition drop, Superstay Matte Ink Birthday Edition Liquid Lipsticks 949. There's two shades of pink, two shades of red. They say it's cake scented, which is what makes it special. And then again, lasts up to 16 hours or 100 cake bites or 50 sips of bubbly. Okay. <laughs> at least they're trying to be cute, okay? At least they're trying to be cute. I appreciate it. Then let's talk about what L'Oreal dropped. Again, lots of products. Again, not super cohesive. We have these Glow Paradise Lip Balming Gloss, $10.99. There's nine pink and brown shades. They say it's a silky balm with pomegranate extract and hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid actually can be quite a nice plumping ingredient. I would much rather see that than like a menthol or a capsaicin ingredient, like a spicy ingredient. I'd rather see the hyaluronic acid. So I'm happy to see that. And then similarly, they have the Glow Paradise Balm and Lipsticks, also $10.99. 
$9.99. There's eight shades here. Similar shades, similar marketing. It's just lipstick versus gloss. They do have another product, but it says that it's coming soon or sold out or something. It, Ulta's, their website's really weird right now. It's the Glow Paradise Lip and Cheek Tint $13.99. There's four shades. It does look really sheer, so that might be nice for the right person. Some people really like that sheer wash of color. As long as it's an even wash of color, it's probably really beautiful. There's also some new red lipsticks, uh, re reds of worth satin lipsticks, and some new mascara, the Voluminous Noir Balm Volumizing Mascara. I mean, not very exciting. And finally, speaking of not very exciting, these came out, I'm pretty sure the Bratz collection with Makeup Revolution came out a while ago, but now it's at Ulta, so I figured I'd let you know. $32 to $50 for various sets. All right, you ready for PR purchase product of the week? Let's talk about the Blush Aesthetic Palette by Laura Lee Los Angeles. Oh my gosh, is this packaging beautiful or what? I love that she called it Blush Aesthetic because I feel like this does have a very beautiful blush aesthetic. Absolutely gorgeous and I love that it's got waffles on the back. You know, you've got your little strawberry, champagne-y looking, Sprite looking drinks down here, uh, and some rosé and, you know, some lips and some waffles. Let's do it. Oh, and palm trees, of course. But let's talk about the palette. This is what is on my face today. I use this on my eyes and my cheeks. So on my eyes, I mostly used caramel cream and sangria. That is what you're mostly seeing. And then on the inner corner, I did use the shade Golden Haze. As you can see, I am getting hard pan on this, so I'm going to discontinue dipping my fingers in the shade and I'm only going to be using a brush. I do feel like it's from the oils in my finger creating hard pan on it, so I'm gonna stop doing that. On my cheeks today, I did use caramel cream and then I used the golden haze as a highlighter and I did have to scrape it a little bit to get it to pick up on the brush because I touched it with my fingers and some products you just can't put your fingers in it and this happens to be one of them. Overall, very easy to use, nice and built I went ahead and swatched the shades that are the deepest in here. That's caramel cream, strawberry ice cream, and sangria. And it looks like if you're looking for really deep toned shades, they're really the only one in here that's very deep toned is that sangria shade. Let me just go ahead and swatch the lightest shades here. Actually, we'll swatch all the rest of the blush shades. Actually, this pink is really, really bright. And then finally, I am gonna just put my finger in here one more time and hopefully get a good swatch of the highlighter shade, which I feel like may not work on very light skin tones. It does have a little bit of a pink shift, which is really fun. It works great as an eyeshadow. Again, that's what I have on the inner corner of my lid. It's beautiful. All right, moving on from that, I do have a purchase. I got my Lisa Eldridge foundation that I was hoping was going to replace the La Mer foundation in my life. On initial application, I did not use it with a primer because I didn't want it to have an issue with whatever primer I was using. I just wanted to put it straight onto my face. And I will tell you initially, I really liked it, but the more I was wearing it, I saw it starting to break up on my face. So, so far not as good as the La Mer because I feel like I can use the La Mer any way that I want to. I've never had a problem, but I am going to play with this with different primers and see if I can get it to look a little more even. You probably can't tell because of the studio lights, but in a mirror, I can really see it starting to break up on my skin, which I don't really like. So. We'll have to see. I will say though that I really like this shade on me. It's shade number 10. I feel like it matches me really well. If anything, it is slightly too yellow, slightly too deep, but I think I can get away with it. And then finally, just on my lips, I never wear pink lipstick, but I really was feeling that pink blush aesthetic today. <laughs> so this was sent to me by BK Beauty. This is the shade Passion. This lipstick is so comfortable and it's so pretty. I put it all over and then I topped it with a little bit of golden haze just in the middle, but let me go ahead and swatch this here so you can see the shade on its own. It's just a beautiful, creamy lipstick. And there is a very slight, very slight vanilla scent to it. These are really, really nice. So thank you to BK Beauty for setting these over. And I love the magnetic closure. It feels so luxe and pretty. All right, notable sales of the week. Of course, we're inching up on Black Friday. There's a ton of sales, so let's just pop into it. Glossier, from uh, November 25th to 29th, they're having a 20% off sale. Figure I'd give you a heads up on that. Ulta Black Friday deals have started up to 50% off. They have daily deals going through Cyber Monday. I definitely recommend you checking daily because they, I don't think they have a full list of the products that are coming anywhere. I could be wrong. If you do have a full list and you have an internet link to it, I will 
will link it in the description so other people can find it. Hourglass, you can join the waitlist to get VIP access to their Black Friday 20% off event. You can sign up on their website. I will have all the links down below. Derm Store has huge sales going on right now for brands like Dermalogica, Smashbox, Herbivore Botanicals, Peter Thomas Roth, tons of brands over there. Kosas has a progressive sale with up to 30% off. Kaleidos, 20% off site-wide, excluding bundles, but they do have special offers on their collection sets. Cover FX has up to 50% off of select products. Sigma, 40% off site-wide, plus free shipping on orders of $25 or more. Pat McGrath has a progressive sale with up to 35% off. There are some exclusions, so check their website to see what the deal is on that. And then finally, Decium has 23% off for the entire month of November. So if you're looking to stock up on your Decium, this is the time to do it. And finally, our artist shout out of the week. This is actually a person I have been following on YouTube for a long time, and I don't know why I wasn't following her on Instagram. She was brought up in our What's Been Makeup Hunters group. It's Pomp Berry. I've been following Pomp Berry since she was in the Nick's Face Awards with Raw Beauty Christie, and she's she's incredible. Her real name is Fernanda. She is a pro makeup artist. She's originally from Brazil, but she's living in Los Angeles. Let's go ahead and take a look at her first look. I'm honestly not even sure how 100% to describe this. It's like, like punk rock meets clown couture, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, but I, let me just tell you, I especially love the glitter brows here. The green in the inner corner of the eye is so gorgeous. And of course, the graphic liner is beautiful. I also love how lightly smudged the lipstick is like purposefully lightly smudge it's beautiful it just gives a really cool effect all right second look this is a drag look that she did back in may and it honestly for me it totally reminds me of lady gaga i don't know if that was intentional or not the feathered little blonde brows are beautiful and i just love how they complement the glitter liner around her eyes and the way she paired it with the burgundy lip and of course the lashes lashes are absolutely perfect and finally the third look that she actually did last halloween but I wanted you to see a different side of her talent. What this sets off for me is a whole like glam Dungeons and Dragons vibe. <laughs> It's so cool. Like the glitter around the eyes and the blue contacts. And I love like the wet highlight on the upper lip and the chin, almost giving it like a sweaty, I've just been fighting orcs look. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And then of course I have to show you the full look. And if your jaw did not just drop, I have no idea why. Just incredible. It's so incredible. So I'll link Fernanda's Instagram down below if for some reason you're not already following her. She's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend you go check her out. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you so very much. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hopefully you can join us. If you can't, it is absolutely no problem at all. It's very easy to find if you're subscribed. Just head over to your subscription feed. It will be there. If you are not subscribed, though, there's another way you can find it. You can head over to to my channel page. You can click on my videos and then click on the video titled live chat. I do want to give you a heads up that starting the first week of December, we are going to be having evening chats. First week of December, first week of January, first week of February, first week of, all the way up until spring uh, because I am going to be working a farmer's market in the morning on Sundays, first week of the month through up until the spring. I may be continuing it through the spring, but let's just go up to spring and we're going to see how it goes. So those will be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Hopefully that works out for you. If you aren't able to come to the morning ones, hopefully you'll be able to come to the evening ones. And if you do come to the morning ones, hopefully you can transition over to the evenings for just that one chat a month. But if you enjoyed What's Up in Makeup today and you'd like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch. But if you do have to go, it is no problem at all. We are all busy. I get it. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I'll see you in a video very, very soon.